this is the part two of the pipeline tutorial uh, for VFX match moving shot. Um, now that we're inside a match mover, uh, I'm just going to highlight some of the things that you need to do uh, when creating a match moving sequence. First of all, we want to import our sequence. We hold uh, this load sequence button here. And we find the shot the PNG sequence that we just created. And um, we set our inner out frames if they've been interlaced or not. Um, what sort of motion? This is a very important bit. Um, here we can specify what sort of motion the camera was on. Um, it was a nodal pan for this specific, specific one of the of the whale going over the house, um, and the frame rate was on 25 frames a second. Uh, the focal length stayed constant as well. Um, excellent. So now we can import this, and we can see we now have our footage inside a match mover. Before we start tracking, we're going to uh, have a look at our footage and see if there's any moving elements within the frame. Um, anyone that does move uh, in the scene itself, uh, AK, if there's any sort of uh, actors in there, they will need to be contoured out. Um, when you go up to hit contour and say new contour, here we can start to keyframe. them out of the scene and we will need to keyframe this as we go all the way through making sure that uh, they are hidden from the track because we don't want the track to try and um, put tra tracking points on our actor uh, as it may think it is a camera motion instead of uh, actors motion. Excellent. Uh, now we're going to go up to uh, an automated tracking test. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the sensitivity and dens uh, density of these features. Uh, the grayscale or colors, we um, use grayscale because that's our high contrast point, not our high saturation point. So we're going to go grayscale. And we're just going to fiddle with these to see if we can get a good number of tracking points, but not too many. I would find this is a good number. Excellent, and we're going to run it. Excellent, so once I've now gone through and keyframed out uh, our actor, uh, you can see that the track is working well. Uh, all of the points are looks good. Um, excellent, we will need to clean up this track though. This, this process is one that you need to refine several times until you get the correct uh, track. Um, we go up to 2D tracking and we say clean assist or press F11. We want to start having a look and saying we're going to keep any ones with 30 frames, uh, sorry, keep 30 frames, uh, 30 tracks per frame. This will just make sure that there are at least 30 tracks within the frame. Um, the lifespan, we tend to only use track, lifespan, and hard tracks. Uh, you always want to keep your hard tracks. Um, and the lifespan, I would normally say keep them. Let's say 50 frames, I'd, that's that's two seconds. So yeah, that would be nice. Uh, if any track stays for two seconds, it's worth keeping. Excellent, so we're just gonna clean up our piece. You can see that it has refined our track down to a few, a lot less um, of the tracking points. Next thing we're going to look at is uh, using hard tracks. So hard tracks are tracks that um, it will take that track information as a priority above all the other tracks around it um, when it's calculating the camera solve. So if you know that a certain point is going to be a good place to track, then you may want to make this your hard track. I have found that up here would be a good idea because all of these tracks here are all green all the way through and they have a clear, see here, it has a clear point in which it's tracking onto. So I'm just gonna select my track here and go hard track. I might do this for a few if I know that they are. I see down in here in the timeline. They're very they're, their lifespan is very long, and they mostly consist of green. These are the sort of tracks that we want to turn into a hard track. Every time you do a hard track, or every time you change anything to do with your tracks, you want to go up to two D uh, sorry three D tracking and say solve for camera. Each time you do this, each time you do this, it will um readjust your camera motion and um, each time you're refining the motion which the camera is doing. Excellent, so now that our camera is solved we're going to go have a look at it in the 3D view. If we go up to here and click 3D 
we can actually see our camera and we can see the tracking points in which it is detecting so here we can actually start to see if the track has done the motion in which we want it to sorry if the camera salt has fulfilled the motion which we want it to do um, this camera motion is matching the virtual motion so the virtual motion is matching the actual motion very closely and it's a very good track um, excellent we can see here this is the house and here these are the trees and now we can now bring this into Maya and start animating around these to make sure we have the right depth perception last thing we're going to look at is exporting our track once we get it to a point that we're happy with um, we're just going to go up to here to export and we're going to make sure as we're taking it into Maya we're going to save it as a Maya project and we can name it whatever we want make sure that you take your camera your 3d points and maybe the distortion group if you need it and therefore when we open this in Maya we can have all of these elements ready for us to animate around excellent this has been part two of the pipeline uh, covering 3d tracking and camera solves next it's going to be matching animation to the track